Okay, gonna go ahead and set up this uh, crankshaft end play on this Type 1 VW engine. I've gone ahead and I've put my magnetic fixture on here and I've got my dialing indicator set at zero. I'm gonna try and do this on the fly here. Uh, so you can see, well hopefully you can see in the video that I've got it at zero and I'm just gonna establish what I have right now. So I'm just gonna pull it back and forth and I'm gonna read on the dial indicator how much I have and it's looking like I'm going 10, 20, 30, and just down to about 33 thou. <clears throat> now the manufacturer spec, some guys like to run them one to three thou, but you should have a bit of end float. Uh, and the maximum is usually around five thou. So if you can get between three and five thou, you're doing pretty good. It's gonna reduce the amount of friction, but it's still also gonna control your thrust loading. So that's what you're gonna do first of all is establish what you have for the end float. Now what I'm gonna do is just take this off and hopefully you can see here in the video, I'm gonna remove what's called the gland nut and that holds the uh, flywheel onto the crankshaft. And you can see on this one, there's a bunch of holes in behind this gland nut and what I've done with this one is I've gone ahead and used a fixture and drilled the flywheel out to an eight dowel and the crankshaft I also drilled out to a eight dowel. And what that does is it allows for a stronger bite as opposed to just having the four. When you start to increase the horsepower in these engines, then they can shear them off very easily and it ruins the crankshaft. So I'm gonna take this off. I've gone ahead prior in the video tightening this up. So what I have for end flow. So I'll take this gland nut off and you can see the eight dowel holes here now. And there's a mark here and I've indexed this flywheel to the crankshaft itself so that it's balanced from the factory in those points. And then when you drill, there's one offset hole so it can only go one way. So I've gone ahead and marked that so it's easier to reinstall. So I need to just pull this off off of the dowel, they become kind of tight. And you can see on the back here, there's the eight holes. And then there's a seal that goes in here and the seal that goes on the outside to seal the oil in the engine over here. So I've left one in here just to help index it. So when I put it back into position, the rear main bearing, the one you see right here, inside the two halves of the case is this bearing right here gets held in place, the oil goes around the outside, and then it has a thrust flange on it, which you see right here. That's that bearing inside the case. So what needs to be done is put the right size of shims in place to take up the clearance that we measured already at 33 thou. Uh, and then we put in shims so that we get somewhere between that three to five thou of end float clearance. So what I've done is I've picked up some brand new ones and they all measure out. And it's a good thing to take your vernier caliper and I'm just using this one for the ease of the video. Because we want to check these and make sure they're all at 10 thou. So 10 thou. And thou, and the last one, oh, 10 thou. Okay, so if I was to put the three 10 thou shims in there and bolt it all back up and I check the end float, I should have about three thou of end float. So there was a bit of calculation involved with what bearing I was gonna install in the case to compensate for end float, because you can shim these bearings up to quite a bit. So I'm just gonna put these in, I'm just gonna put them in dry. Well, there's a little bit of residual oil that's sitting on them. So I'm just gonna put them in place. Then uh, <clears throat> what would happen is you would install the rigger main seal in place once the end float is established. So once we get the right clearance, I would lube these all up with some white lube or engine assembly lube. I'd put all the dowels in and then I would put the crankshaft on, or pardon me before I put the, uh, the flywheel on, then I would install my rear main seal that sits right on the end of the flywheel. Not a bad idea to check the fit too. 
to make sure it does fit tight and it's going to be able to stop the oil from coming out of the engine. So we're going to take them, we've got the three shims in place, now I'm going to take a look at the index point on this thing where it's supposed to be and the mark that I have on the flywheel. I'm sorry if it becomes a little bit of a lengthy video but it's good to get a good understanding of how to control and float in an engine and just because this is in a, a VW engine it doesn't mean that it's not applicable to different types of uh, clearances that you would find in other engines but there may be different ways that they're controlling them by either by using a thrust shim or maybe even a bearing very similar to this one but a split shell bearing with a thrust flange on it controlling the engine float so go ahead and plug this up to a couple hundred and change foot pounds so a little 40 or 50 foot pounds in there with my gun should be pretty good and then we'll go ahead and set up the dial indicator again and see where we get to with our dimension now so let's see if we can move this back over here and see if we can you guys to see the reading on this. Now this was, I had mentioned in class that I had done this and I said I wish I had a camera. So here I am now redoing this just to show what I had found and it was like textbook because the clearances that I set the engine up for worked out at the very end that I wanted to have three to five end float and I'm at three thousand. And there it is right there. One, two, three. Not sure if you can see that in the camera or not, but it doesn't move very much at all. Before we were moving all the way around to the 33 thou, and now I've put in the 310 thou shims and checking it, and I have 3 thou of end float. Exactly what I want to have for this performance engine. So I'll go ahead then and remove this, reinstall the rear main seal, the seal that goes in behind the flywheel, put all the dowels in, and then install this and torque it with a new gland nut, because these gland nuts stretch. And again, they are, the gland nut itself is also the pilot bearing for the input shaft of the transmission. So that's pretty well in every application if it's a standard. And on the inside of that, there is some bearings down inside here that are needle bearings that help support the end of the input shaft for the transmission. And I have an input shaft, which I happen to have an input shaft right here for the transmission. So this would go in here. So this would be where your clutch would sit on, splined to the input shaft of the transmission. This is an old one that I just use for aligning clutches. And you can see that this portion here of the input shaft is the mated bearing surface for the bearings on the inside of the gland nut. And it sits like that. So when it's assembled in the engine and it's all torqued, that pilots this end of the shaft and the bearing in the in the transmission right here supports the main shaft coming into the transmission well, interesting stuff and again this engine here is built up to be an 1835 i'm not quite sure what we're going to get for horsepower out of it probably looking somewhere between 120 plus horsepower but we'll see where we get to um, so that's a demonstration of crankshaft end play <laughs>